and he was destined for greatness in the ring. Now a new book, 30 Years in the Making, explores the story behind the Liston Ali fights. We'll talk with the author. This is Vegas Inc. with Dana Gentry and Jeff Gillen. We're minding your business. It's a question boxing fans have pondered for decades. Did Sonny Liston take a dive in his fights with Muhammad Ali? If so, why? If not, what happened? We'll talk with a man who spent three decades looking for answers. Don't go away. Welcome back. It's been the subject of books and documentaries. Now, 50 years since the famed fights between Sonny Liston and Muhammad Ali. Yet another book now chronicles what happened when Liston failed to come out for the seventh round in Miami and then was flailed by the so-called phantom punch in the main rematch. And Paul Gallander spent three decades researching what happened in those bouts. The result, the real story behind the Ali Liston fights. He joins us to talk about it. And I want to say... Uh, my father passed away in 1989, but before that, you actually interviewed him in your work for this fight. So there's my disclosure, or for this book, so that, that's my disclosure. Tell me, why is this still of interest to anybody? Well, Sonny Liston is a total mystery. Um, he's the most misunderstood athlete of all time, and one of the three reasons I wrote this book is because most of what the world knows about Sonny Liston today has very, very little basis in fact. Um, the fact that most people now remember him only and that iconic photo of him being on the, on, mm -hmm. the, on the canvas in Lewiston, Maine is a real travesty because I believe that Sonny Liston was no less than the second best heavyweight of all time and I believe he was by far the most talented heavyweight Behind of all time. Behind who? Ali. Okay. And who, so what are we getting wrong about Sonny? I mean, you, you say he's the most misunderstood. What are we misunderstanding? He was, uh, he was no saint, but he, was, uh, he had a lot of really good qualities. Every child that ever met him loved him. Uh, he was one of the more charitable people that ever lived. I mean, yeah. he, he would never pass a kid or a, or a disabled person on the street, evidently, from, from my research, without giving the person money. 10, 20 bucks at a time when 10 or 20 bucks was, was, something. Uh, was a lot of money. Yeah. And if he had only been given the second chance that every other athlete, in particular boxer with a checkered background, had been given, I think he could have r risen to really uh, uh, wonderful heights and done a lot of good. Well, I don't want to give away what you found, but did he throw those fights? He didn't throw the first fight. I mean, there's four reasons, and I won't go into detail uh, why he, uh, what uh, those four reasons were, except to say that Sonny was probably twice as old as Muhammad Ali in that first fight um, because of the psychological warfare that Ali ran on, on Liston. Liston fought angry, and he didn't train because nobody thought then Cassius Clay had a chance of winning that fight. And Sonny also had a severely injured left shoulder tried to get the fight postponed, but the athletic commission would not let him postpone the fight. The second fight, he took a dive because his wife and his child were being held against their will. They were kidnapped, and Sonny was told, if you want to see them again, you have to lose. He was threatened by Mus the black Muslims? The black Muslims uh, are, are the people that had Sonny. They may have gotten the idea from the mob because the mob had resorted to those kinds of activities uh, with other black And fighters. this is because Cassius Clay had just become Muhammad Ali and they were mm -hmm. what, protecting him? Well, yeah, and uh, Ali uh, had no knowledge of this. Uh, and he would not have approved of it. I don't know if he could have stopped it, uh, uh, even if he had known about it. Um, but I think they just wanted to make sure that there was no possible way that Ali could lose that fight. What happened to Sonny after that whole incident? Well, uh, he was suspended. Um, he wasn't able to get a license in the United States for uh, almost three years. Went to Sweden, fought uh, three times there. Um, and. He was always in the top 10 rankings, but there was no way that uh, he was ever going to get another shot at the title. Plus, in boxing terms, he was a very, very old man. I believe when Sonny fought Ali in 1964, he was probably 43 or 44 years old. 
There's, there's a lot of information that, that would lead that, uh, the conclusion. Plus, Sonny has said on a couple of occasions to people he trusted that he was a lot older than people thought he was. His death remains a mystery, and in uh, doing research for this interview, I saw Lem Banker, a local sports handicapper, told somebody a long time ago that he actually called the coroner uh, after Sonny's death, so we may really never know what happens. No, and, and what's really tragic to me is that the thing, there are two things that people uh, most want to know about Sonny Liston uh, and that they focus on. How he died, and I, I'm just going with natural causes because I have no uh, I have no desire to find out who, if somebody killed Sonny Liston who did it. There's nothing to be gained by it. I don't think Sonny would want me to do that. Uh, and, and why did he throw that second fight? And there is no doubt that he threw that second fight. All right. We appreciate you. you being here. Appreciate it very much. Thank you.